well, it's hit the 10 o'clock hour, so we'll go on ahead and get started. Um, our presentation is called Quilling the Boredom with Alternative Instruction, Augmented Reality, Escape Kits, and Scavenger Hunts. Once again, I'm Carly Johnson. Um, I am a history, geography, and anthropology librarian at Jacksonville State University in Alabama in the United States. Um, with me is... Hi, uh, my name is Kimberly Westbrooks. I am the Business and Social Sciences Librarian also at Jacksonville State University, and we are office mates. So um, I know we're in the time of COVID and usually we would be distant, but here we are, and we're happy to be here with you this morning. <laughs> All right, so, um, what we're going to be talking about today in our presentation is um, our use of gamification in our traditional information literacy classes. Um, we made this decision to start incorporating alternative instruction when we realized that we were having issues with student engagement and motivation from our students as we were trying to instruct them um, in research and how to use the library. So we decided that we we wanted to try something new to grab their attention and thus we began our journey in looking into other methods of instruction. Um, this went very successful and, it and we decided that we wanted to do a case study on our implementation process. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, to get us started, to let you know, in our case study, we used um, a mixed methods approach. And to help you understand like what you're looking at, um, we wanted to just briefly kind of define what we're looking at. So the very first thing that we're looking at that we are going to be talking about is information literacy. And what that means in our field is information literacy is a set of integrated abilities encompassing the reflective discovery of information, the understanding of how information is produced and valued, and the use of information in creating new knowledge and participating ethically in communities of learning. Um, this definition comes from one of our premier professional organizations for academic libraries from the American College and Research Libraries. Um, within that um, information literacy, there is actually a set of um, threshold concepts, a framework, if you will, that guides our um, learning objectives and our principles. Um, there are six different concepts, and for our process of gamification, we use two of them. We'll talk about those later in the presentation. Um, the next thing that we wanted to define was what do we mean by gamification as an um, alternative form of instruction? So for us, we're going with the definition for gamification. It's the application of game design, thinking, and mechanics in order to enhance motivation and engagement and fun. That definition is coming from a very seminal book that influenced our research heavily called The Fun of Motivation. It's by Francis from 2017. Um, with game-based learning, which is kind of um, a twin or a sister to gamification, um, we're also using the definition from Francis Fun of Motivation. And with game-based learning, it is a similar concept to gamification, but the difference is, is that with game-based game learning, it's actually a game that is just integrated into education to ease the learning process. So the big difference between the two is that if you're going to do complete gamification, you're going to gamify an entire class. The game is the work. If you're going to do game-based learning, you're actually going to institute a game as a part, as a part of your overall lesson plan, whether you're lecturing or doing group work, that game will be just one part of it. Whereas with gamification, you're gonna gamify the whole process. So that's um, what we were looking at. So to begin our case study, the first thing that we did as academic librarians, once we realized we had a problem, we immediately went to what we do best, which is research. So before we um, did, jumped in and said, yes, we're gonna do gamification, we actually began looking at um, all different types of alternative instruction. There are many different ways that we could go, um, and we weren't sure exactly which way we wanted to go. So we began to attend workshops and conferences that dealt with um, different alternative instruction methods. We spoke with experts. We started reading relevant literature within our field to see what other institutions, other, other 
peers had been doing. Through that process, we quickly came to the determination, my colleagues and I, that gamification was probably going to be the best fit for our institution and our students. It was very popular um, within our area. So once we went with that route, we began to focus in more um, on attending workshops specifically to gamification, speaking with experts, um, all of that. And then we wound up going more specifically and started looking at popular gaming magazines to help us determine what we wanted to do. So we also looked at our institutional history. Um, at Jacksonville State University, we have a vibrant group of programmers who are very interested in gaming, uh, professors in mathematics and also computer programming who had used uh, badges in online classes, who had produced games themselves, and also some of our senior librarians at our institution had used games in their instruction uh, to get additional um, persons interested in our orientation programs and also to visit the library. So we talked to them to see how that had gone, if it had been successful, and really most importantly to our research, what had not worked and why um, those professors felt it had not worked in the past. We also have a very vibrant community around Jacksonville State University that is highly engaged with gaming. We have gaming shops, the largest non-Greek organization on Jacksonville University's campus is a game club. So we wanted to talk to them as well to see what they would like to see and what would motivate them to participate in information literacy instruction. So the next phase in our case study is once we had um, done the preliminary research, we actually moved next into our planning phase. So once we decided that gamification was the way we wanted to go forward, we began to determine what type of gaming games that we wanted to include in our information literacy programs. So the first thing we did was is we um, built a criterion or guidelines that influenced what games we chose, what would work best with our students. Then we began to look at our our peer institutions to see a what they were using and b how were they implementing these games to see if if we could do a similar thing or if we needed to um, adapt for scale and viability um, after that since we knew that gamification was the way we were going to go we began to write proposals for our administration because we were going two ways with our gamification some gamification we could do in-house we could create our own games and that was very free but we also determined that we wanted to use um, outside gaming elements um, that we would need monetary funds for so we knew early on that we were going to need buy-in from our administration to help us purchase those. So our next step was to develop a proposal and get it approved. After that, we began to, our, coll our colleagues and I diverged into two different groups where we had ones that began the in-house work for the games we were going to do in-house. And those of us like me who wanted to purchase outside gaming materials, we began to look at different options for um, educational gaming platforms, which then then once we had done that and we purchased the games, we wanted to make sure that even though we were doing gamification, which can be fun and motivating, it also leads to entertainment. And we were afraid that we might lose our educational rigor that we're known for. So we wanted to make sure that any games that we bought when we implemented them or used them in the classroom, that they were tied very strictly to learning objectives. So before we even laid out the games, how we were going to institute them in the classroom, we first developed learning objectives and matched our games to the learning objectives to make sure that we kept that educational rigor. Once we did that, we began to outline our game elements to get everything set up in our different classrooms because we were doing this in a multi-pronged approach across our um, different instruction areas. So one thing to keep in mind with gaming elements, once we were starting to outline those, there's a couple of different ways to do it. And depending on the classroom, um, we took different approaches. So you can have your storyline first and make your objectives match that storyline, or you can go ahead and have um, 
the opposite, which is true. You can have the uh, objectives match the storyline or the storyline match the objectives. It can be engineered in either direction. And depending on the classroom, uh, we made that decision. Also, the creation of the games. Um, of course, you can have nonlinear stories. So if you have individual experiences for students, that they have multiple different endings, depending on the student. Um, again, since we were just beginning this program and we were new to this, we decided to go with a linear storyline. So every student ended up with a similar ending. Um, that said, they had some components that they were reporting back to us so that we knew they were having individual experiences and not copying from one another. Um, also testing. I can't emphasize this enough that each gaming element had to be tested and then the game as a whole as an experience as a whole had to be tested as well so that was done with student workers who were in the library and also within our community so those gaming um, clubs that I was talking about earlier were instrumental in the testing of not only the elements but the game as a whole then of course um, those that weren't part of a class those were more the experiences that were more of an orientation style um, we promoted and marketed those experiences and the games themselves were very much a part of the strategy they were very enticing for students to participate and gain some information about information literacy um, that was done through of course our uh, student-based media, but also through flyers and even old-fashioned sidewalk chalk in front of the library to let them know what was going on inside of the building if they might be walking past. Um, and then finally, once we had tested these games, these gaming elements, and we felt they were ready for classrooms, for groups, we did pilot programs. So instead of doing full scale launches at first, um, we were doing pilots, small groups, and getting their feedback as well. So once we got done, um, we're now moving into the discussion phase of our case study. Um, so Basically, from here, once we decide on gamification and we had our process ready to go, we decided to specifically focus on three types of games. Um, scavenger hunts, escape kits, and augmented reality. Now, with those, the two threshold um, educational concepts that we used to tie these together for our educational rigor, our information has value and strategy as strategic exploration. With each of these different game gamification options, we decided to, as part of our test pilot, to focus on one specific type of class, and those were gonna be our orientations. And each one of these corresponded to a different type of orientation that we do with our students. Scavenger hunts were used in a lot of our outreach programs and in our information literacy and appealed to students across the board. Escape kits um, were used specifically for first year students and augmented reality were used for business students. We'll go into a little more depth with each one of them. Scavenger hunts were used with our large scale orientation that we hold, which is called tailgate at the library. Um, it introduced each student to their librarian, their subject specialist, and the information that was held there. Um, it not only brought in more students to find out uh, what the library offers, but also um, we had games and prizes and they were highly motivated to participate and learn more. Um, with the escape kits, those are um, adventure storylines. Uh, it's made by a gaming company and the gaming company provides you with all the pieces, um, locks, puzzles, uh, anything you can think of. And with those, 
they also provide you ready-made storylines, but from those kits, you can create your own storylines and create puzzles and games um, where the students learn and it's student-driven peer learning. So in this option, this was the option where the class was completely gamified. There was no lecture, there was no me standing in front of them. This was strictly them doing their own learning. I was there um, as a mediator to help get them back on the right path if they got lost, but otherwise they controlled their own learning and they loved it. Augmented reality was used with the business orientation class. There's highly specialized materials that they came to learn individually. Um, I use the Metaverse app, which is free for Apple and iPhone. I designed a linear, a linear story. They had clues that they had to find both in real life and digitally to solve the issues for um, investments for Business Buffalo. Um, also, these were huge classes, 200 plus in each of them. There were three different sections and all of them had individualized learning experiences. The only thing I would change, I would also have a paper option in the future, just just in case there were some technical glitches with their device. Um, here are some of our reference that we use to influence our research and to help make our decisions for gamification. Thank you so much. That is the end of our presentation. Does anyone have any questions?